She continues saying, I block your calls because I know you'll manipulate all of my thoughts. And that was once again, like, that is really how Wilmer controlled Demi. He manipulated the shit out of her. Hey guys, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. Today I have a throwback topic for you, and it's all about Demi Lovato. So if you may remember, a few months back, I had a video that was, I guess, kind of fall viral. It was called The Fallout Between Demi Lovato and the Jonas Brothers. And we posted that on July 18, 2020. And in that video, we talk about why Demi and the Jonas Brothers don't speak anymore, a possible relationship that occurred between her and Nick Jonas, and how her ex-boyfriend Wilmer Valderrama was pretty toxic. And some of the comments on that video were like, this is speculation, like how do you know this? So if you don't know, we run a celebrity gossip and insider website. We've been running it since 2013 and over the years we've accumulated a lot of sources. So a lot of the information I posted in that video were from sources and, and the good thing about Demi Lovato is that if you follow up with her, she spills a lot of tea. So that video that we posted, we actually had a blog post that went hand in hand with it and it was published on May 9th. So what we're going to talk about today is a song that possibly exposes what happened between her and Nick Jonas. And this song is actually leaked. So if you don't follow up with Demi, you probably never heard of the song before. It actually leaked on May 14, which was a couple days after our blog post. And the song is called Ain't No Friend. And it is clearly obvious that it's about Nick Jonas. I'm gonna break down why it is. And we're also going to talk about a song that also leaked by Demi called Sorry. And it exposes her toxic relationship with her ex, Wilmer. And we're going to get into that as well. So let's start off with Ain't No Friend. And you guys can just search it up, find it anywhere. It's not on any streaming platforms because again, it is a leaked song. So the song starts out saying, this ain't no safe house, saw my ship and it wrecked. Now you wanna dip out. Demi and Nick used to have, or I think they still have, they have a joint record label called Safe House Records. So that's what she's referencing there. As I explained in the video, they had a fallout because after Demi went through a lot of things that she went through, Nick Jonas was like no longer in her life and they were really close, they were best friends. And I explained in the video that she was there for the Jonas Brothers and she kind of was basically a main factor in reviving their career. When Demi fell off her like silver game again, all of that, they kind of like stepped out on her, they stopped talking to her. So it continues, the song says, it was all good back when we were working for the Big Mouse. We were best friends, family, and everything between. Never thought you'd be an enemy. The Big Mouse is obviously Disney Channel. And they both starred on Camp Rock 1 and 2 together. During that Disney era, they also toured together. Demi was um, one of the acts on the Jonas Brothers' tour. Now it continues. Tell me where were you when I needed you? I see you for what you are. I guess that's cool. Ouch self-explanatory she just needed a true friend to be there for her or not even help her out through her like sober issues or anything like that just somebody to be there for her friend to listen all of that he wasn't there and they were best best friends now we get into the chorus and she sings but you ain't no friends of mine no you ain't no friends of mine your love was a lie and then it repeats and she ends it with you left me there to die you ain't no friends of mine this doesn't necessarily mean that it's referencing exactly the od that happened in 2018 but I think it's just a general term. And then the second part of the song, it says, it was a sad day when I realized that the loyalty was only going one way. And if you watched my video or read my post, I explained excessively that Demi basically sacrificed one of her eras to basically become like a promoting act for the Jonas Brothers. She went on a joint tour with Nick, and at the time he was kind of reviving his solo career and through him and through Demi, that's how they revived the Jonas Brothers' career. I'm not saying that they needed her, they did actually, but this is a business tactic. A lot of people are like, well, the Jonas Brothers were famous in 2008. Well, no duh, but throughout time, relevancy fades. So you have to do something to become more relevant or to be in the in the general public in the spotlight again, which is why a lot of celebrities get into like fake relationships. And it was beneficial in both ways, you know? And I'm not saying it didn't help Demi, but at the time, she was the bigger star. She was more relevant, she was charting, and the Jonas Brothers didn't. And through that, it was more exposure for them to kind of cultivate their comeback. And this is how, you know, it happens in the business. This is how it works. So she was saying, like, the loyalty was only going one way. She promoted them when Joe was part of the band DNC. She would perform their song together. 
and they would work on that like nostalgic trick where they would perform like the camp rock songs together or songs from like back in the day and it was all to kind of like like look guys remember the good old days and that's what the Jonas Brothers did they based their whole era on nostalgia Demi did all of this for them and never really thought of herself as somebody where like I'm like I'm the bigger star now I'm not gonna speak to you I'm gonna ignore you that was never the issue and she even sings in that same verse took you on the road showed you some love then you played me I wish I understand the world again nobody that'll pull me in crashing down like an avalanche oh whoa <laughs> Demi and Nick had a joint tour called the future now tour and I explained that that tour was basically Demi's Confident Arrow. That was the album name. And the tour started like 10 days after Nick released his album. And no tour starts 10 days after an album release because you have to spend a lot of time promoting and making sure that this tour is going to sell. And often celebrities will release an album and tour the next year. And if they're an established celebrity, they'll release the album at the beginning of the year or whatever, and they'll tour a couple of months later. And then when she sings, saying crashing down like an avalanche, they collaborated on a song called Avalanche. So the song continues and it says, tell me where were you when I needed you? I see you for what you are now. I guess that's cool. And it's basically just Demi seeing clarity. And she says, don't forget when you come back around, this is our future now. And what was Demi and Nick's joint tour called? Future now. <laughs> and then the chorus just hits um, again. And that is Demi's leaked song, Ain't No Friend. It's actually insane how the lyrics are very specific to Nick. So a topic that I mentioned as well in the Jonas Brothers and Demi video was Demi's ex-boyfriend Wilmer Valderrama and the next song we're going to talk about actually exposes that it's another leaked song that was originally supposed to be for the Tell Me You Love Me album that was released in 2017 Wilmer and Demi broke up in 2016. So this song leaked on April 8, 2020. And even though Demi has had a lot of flings here and there, no relationship really sticks out to Demi, except one with Wilmer because that was a serious relationship. I'll link a couple of posts down below if you wanna know everything about that. But right now we're just going to focus on the song, sorry. The song starts out saying, I'm sorry, the person you're trying to reach is still out at a party. And she hopes that you don't show up here cause you weren't invited. She's already left you and you're just a little too late. You were always a little too late. It's breaking up and no, I just can't hear you. So basically Demi's just saying that this is the person that I've kicked out of my life. <laughs> like I am out living my life. And she continues saying, but if I could, I wouldn't want to. I'm talking about if she could reach him. You're always just saying the same things and never changing. This <laughs> is a theme in Wilmer and Demi's relationship. He was constantly like telling her like, oh, you know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And he, it was just words, 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 and no action. For example, he told her that he was gonna propose to her. He didn't. They ended up breaking up a few months after she revealed that in an interview. We've been off and on for about like five, five and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so and there, there's a rumor you're engaged. So I don't know if that's- I don't see a ring. Okay, well, <laughs> I wouldn't mind if I saw one. All right. <laughs> But th there's time for everything. You know, we've been together this long and yeah. it's like, I'm obviously I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, it's well, you, you're- And when they broke up, he ended up getting engaged to somebody else. And I think now he's expecting a baby. Oof, crazy, crazy relationship. She continues saying, I block your calls cause I know you'll manipulate all of my thoughts. And that was once again, like, that is really how Wilmer controlled Demi. He manipulated the shit out of her. And she says, and then you'll waste away the best progress I've made and you send flowers to my place thinking it's okay. Basically what this means is that after everything you've done, you're gonna send me a small little gift to make up for nothing. And back in 2016, I exposed a huge story that said a big reason why Demi reportedly struggled with her sobriety was because Wilmer was not sober and he was not a nice dude by any means and he would always put her down and basically you know it seems like emotionally abuse her and I wrote in 2016 that a source told me that Wilmer and Demi led an abusive relationship with the abuse being more on the emotional side as you guys can see on the screen and Demi goes on the next verse of sorry and says my friends say you're a loser my therapist says you're a loser and an emotional abuser I can't follow you into the dark anymore Again, self-explanatory. His negative actions were impacting negatively on Demi and it was leading her to do things that she did not want to do. 
And despite Demi and Wilmer being publicly together for six years, there was a lot of fights behind the scenes. In another verse of the song, Demi sings, You were a mistake. I tried to help you clean up all the mess you made. And then I lost myself because I chose to stay. Because when you love someone, you think that's okay. When she's talking about clean up the mess that you made, like I said, he was not a nice guy to her. And he made her believe that she was the reason for all of, the, all of these issues that they had. And so she would think that she needs to clean up something that she did not do. And in while doing so, she lost herself. And this goes for mental health, body image issues, her eating disorder, her sobriety. And she chose to stay because she thought that, oh, she's in love, you know, and this is what love is. But Demi doesn't really know what love is because she's been surrounded by toxic love all her life. And that basically summarizes the song. The song ends saying, the person you're trying to reach is still out at a party getting over you. A little too obvious that it is about her relationship with Wilmer. So I feel like these two songs really sum up an important phase in Demi's life. And this year she is coming out with a documentary and a new album and i really think that she's going to open up more into that so i'm actually really excited to watch out for that and i hope that you guys enjoyed this video like and subscribe for more let us know down below what you thought about this video and what other song analysis do you want to see next i'm a big believer that musicians expose a lot of tea in their songs you just have to look for it and with that being said i'll see you next time